<laughs> Alright, welcome to tonight's cast of SIVO Season 2, Week 5. We've got the number one and number two teams top of the line going up against Adi Amos. I'm Helium, and with me tonight is Orbit. Hey, how's it going? Uh, an interesting draft right away, actually. Uh, top of the line opting out to ban the Wisp, even though they do have the first pick here. Um, could be because I know Alaska, one of her signature heroes, is definitely the Wisp. So the Audemus plays a pretty mean Wisp. So that could be the reason for that. It could also be that they don't want to deal with that style of play. And uh, the Nyx Assassin being the other ban for them. And finally, the Bat Rider being a, a pretty standard ban for a second pick. And the Life Stealer. Yeah, so Life Stealer being taken out in the first round. Pretty common these days as he's annoying, opens the door to a really strong aggro try, or even solo lane, uh, given the right situation. Mm -hmm. And then it looks like they do take out the Wisp. Like you said, Alaska has a pretty solid Wisp, and maybe they're not so uh, keen on playing Wisp themselves, so just gonna take it out. Yeah. And uh, they pick up the tree end here as the first pick. Which, I guess I'm fine with the first pick, Treant. He's still somewhat ambiguous, you know, you could off lane, you could solo safe, or even support. So it leaves um, the door open, I guess, for a lineup to form around that. And then we'll see what Adi Amos picks up here in their first round. I actually want to say that it almost gives away too much in the sense that they are... I, I don't think I've seen that many teams experiment with the off lane or solo safe Treant. Just because of... It, it almost does the same thing with minimal items as it does with more items. Um, it also gives away stronger heroes such as the Gyrocopter, maybe even the Visage if they do want to aggro into it. Because when you do pick up a Treant Protector, you're kind of giving away your hand in the sense that you want to have a safe try. Um, and it's very easy to deal with because there isn't really a kind of a stun or a, a kind of zoning spell that the Treant Protector has. He's very defensive. So with a Visage, for example, and an aggro try, it's really tough to deal with. But it looks like Adi Amos here going to pick up Rubik. the Rubik, so... I guess I could go either way with that. I still think Gyro and Rubik are going to two of the better defensive tri -line heroes. But it is still pretty early on. And on top of the line with another pretty early pickup of a Weaver. I feel like there's a lot of heroes in the pool that can counter that pretty early on. So we'll see what top of the line is trying to get done with that. Uh, but we're moving into the second banning phase here. Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't be surprised to see Adi Amos uh, ban the OD here. OD, just one of the really strong 1v1 heroes, made even stronger with the living armor from Trian Protector. Um, yeah, as you said, Weaver is a really... it's a pretty fragile pick, but of course with the living armor it becomes a lot more difficult to deal with. Actually, top of the line is the one that bans out the OD, which is really surprising. Um, I would have thought they would be the ones to pick it for sure. Yeah, I guess just so you have a, another carry potential in the mid lane if they do decide to off lane the train yeah. yet. But it looks like probably going to be, you know, maybe a safe lane weaver uh, with the aggro tri lane with the tree in it, uh, which can be mm. pretty good. I don't know. They it can do a lot. It's pretty early on, but. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, it's hard to aggro with a Treant unless he's the farmer. Um, he doesn't provide much for the aggro try. It depends if, you, of course, you're expecting a solo safe or not. Uh, you can always 3v1 well with him, but in a 3v3 lane, Treant becomes a little bit difficult. You want to kind of have him get as much as possible, so like be the puller uh, without being in a risky situation in a 3v3 lane. And actually, the Visage is going to be banned here, um, not wanting to have a 3v3 situation, I, I think. so. Uh, they could also solo off the Weaver, especially considering Living Armor uh, is in effect. So Weaver can be a little bit more aggressive than usual. Um, we'll see how... they haven't really given away much, as we've uh, kind of stated once or twice already. Um, the draft can still be up in the air for the other two cores for top of the line. But, um, I mean, neither team really showing much, so it could go either way still. Which is a really smart way to begin the first uh, drafting set, really. And then Adi Amos taking out the Shadow Demon, who I thought they might pick up second, but it looks like they went with the, the Rubik anyways. I guess they did pick that after the Weaver, and I love playing Rubik uh, against a Weaver. You always steal Saguchi, it makes you pretty mobile, easy to get in position and steal bigger spells. Like um, So far, Overgrowth. Um, Living Armor also always pretty easy to steal, another good pickup, uh, another reason why Rubik's a good pickup here. And a somewhat interesting ban early on is the Slark is taken out. Maybe yeah. they're going to take a Darkseer. I've seen Slark eat Darkseers for lunch, so... <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to think of what hero would they like. They would want to put in the mid lane, basically, with that ban on the Slark. Um, 
I mean, generally, Slark is picked as a semi kind of way of doing well against a Batrider, but of course, we did see that as the first ban from Audiamus, so they're actually going for the Lone Druid. So this kind of tells me that they might want to run an aggro try with a Gyrocopter. It would do well to eat the Living Armor as well. And a really defensive support pickup now for top of the line. Yeah, they've got some push potential coming out on the Lone Druid uh, and the Flak Cannon, I suppose, from Audi Amos. So Keeper of the Light going to be a big counter push hero now with the Illuminates. Also mm -hmm. able to stack up Farm the Jungle pretty quickly, uh, get a mech up for the team. If Treant doesn't decide to go for that, uh, then I guess Keeper could, I don't know, get a 4 staff or something like that. Yep. This is These are three heroes with very little uh, CC, so to speak. I mean, you have the Mana Leak from Keeper, you have Treant Protector's Ultimate, but no other way of locking people down. So pre-level 6, I want to say, um, they're kind of letting Audiamus just run at them and not have a way of dealing with that for the time being. So their next two heroes might want to solve that issue of like zoning, I guess. Yeah, I'd agree. Uh, Gyrocopter at level 6 is going to be really strong with the call down, because Treant's going to pop an overgrowth, mm -hmm. and like Weaver has to run into the fight. Kata will be on the back end. We'll see what the last two picks are, but I think Gyrocopter is yeah. going to be really strong at 6, especially if they need to gank him, because they need to shut down Gyro and Lone Druid this game. Yep. And we'll see what their pick is here. I wouldn't be against a Skyrath, uh, maybe heading into the mid lane, or, or maybe, as, maybe as another support. I don't know. Uh, when I see Weavers or Anti-Mages or Quops, I really like to pick Skyrath because that 3 second silence can really screw them over. Yeah, yeah, that's actually a really interesting idea. Um, even something like Puck would be pretty good for them. Uh, just the Dream Coil working with Calldown from Gyrocopter as well as Flak is pretty helpful. Um, it's a pretty good time to pick the mid right now. Uh, they actually decide to go for an Ogre. Um, that's a pretty interesting pick. It works really well with the Gyrocopter as well as the Lone Druid. Basically, the Bloodlust, uh, the extra move speed as well speed as attack strap. speed would be pretty good. Yeah, Gotta uh, go Phantom Lancer now picked, so... I don't know how Phantom Lancer is going to do here. Uh, he doesn't really have that many heroes that can protect him. Of course, there is a really strong combo with the Coddle, but once again, there aren't that many stuns on uh, top of the line's team. This is a very kind of split-pushy, late-game oriented lineup um, with not a lot to deal with just raw aggression. Um, we'll see what their last pick is, of course, as most likely going to be either a mid or an offlane. So it looks like the puck taken out, which you suggested as a good yeah. pickup, which I agreed with. That's that's what I would have picked for them, yeah, for sure. Maybe they want to take my route and go with Skyrath. We'll see what happens, yeah. though. Uh, and yeah, I think Audiamus, even pretty early on, as long as PL's not getting super uh, big in the late game with the heart uh, and all that, Gyro and then Rubik's Fade Bolt, like that'll take illusions out pretty much instantly for a while in this game. So, reserve mm time. -hmm. Mm -hmm. See how much space Coddle and Treant can buy that Phantom Lancer as top of the line, going for their last ban out here. It looks like Adiemus pretty much only needs a mid right now. And there are quite a few good mids in the pool. Um, even TA would be good this game. There's like. No, no, no fast damage to take off Refraction at all this game. Uh, they're going to go ahead and take out the Razor. Mm -hmm. That's a really... I mean, it, it almost feels like they're banning for each other. I, I said before Puck would be a really good pick for them, then Audiamus bans Puck. And now here, like, Razor does really well against Lone Druid. We've even seen some competitive teams pick that up, and yet they ban the Razor for themselves. This was the hero they wanted to pick because of that Puck ban. And a, an instant Nature's Prophet. This is pure split push and just void at all costs. <laughs> Interesting draft. I feel like Audiamus is faster in this game for sure, and it's up to top of the line to delay fights and just split push as much as possible. Yeah, especially I think that Nature's Profit pick is somewhat greedy here. Yeah, um, I mean, Ritz is going to do pretty well on this Queen of Pain, I find, just because they have nothing to hold him back. He can just blink wherever he wants, uh, he should have a pretty fun time here. Um, so in that sense, the co-op, because of the extra mobility that the puck may or might not necessarily have. Screenshot. What? Hopefully, Spangler will get that reference. Maybe. I don't know. 
There it goes. Someone got it. I don't know, did Spangler stay in our broadcast channel or did he go with Rakuto? I'm not sure, actually. I think he went with Rakuto. Yeah, maybe. We need a stats, man. Brave Bird let us down the other day. <laughs> I really know why we're paused. It doesn't really take this long to take screenshots. I got it. like we are live. I'll go ahead and introduce top of the line. You can get your Audiamus since you uh, play with them a bit. Probably know a little bit longer than I do. <laughs> nice. Alright, so for top of the line on the dire, we've got Steve playing the Phantom Lancer. Um, probably gonna just do the normal tri-lane defensive carry build. We've got Captain Cray playing that Coddle. It looks like he'll just be supporting in that tri-lane. Uh, unstoppable. Looks like he played Counter Strike. Uh, going on the off lane, a Weaver for now. Although Trance following him, uh, Zeth on the Nature's Prophet gonna be in the mid lane. It looks like for now, which is a little interesting. And Eric Kuno, uh, last but not least, got some wards playing that Treant. Something pretty crazy is the amount of money on this Weaver. They pulled him both Tangos and Salves, and he started Wraith Brand, uh, Wraith Band Tango. So he's gonna look to kind of stay in lane a lot more than he'd normally be used to. Um, now on this side we have Nicola uh, playing the Rubik. He's actually going to be heading up the aggressive tri lane. Following right behind him is Uncle Panda playing the gyrocopter, carrying in this case, and Alaska rounding up the support team on the Ogre Magi. Then we have Ritz actually uh, going a slightly um, unorthodox mid build. Normally if you go the uh, Null Talisman you get pooled, but it doesn't look like that's going to be the case here. He is going to be playing the Queen of Pain. And finally in the solo safe position, it's going to be Railgun on the bear. Uh, he's actually kind of mind gaming them a little bit, showing the bear up top kind of, uh, kind yeah, of says right that there. they want to run a solo. S hmm? Yeah, it's it's pretty interesting. It might get in their heads a little bit. Uh, it doesn't look like they they, I don't know if they saw the bear or not. It doesn't look like they're deciding to switch yet. They have no stopping power for that bear, but they're already making its way down to bot lane. And um, yep. Ritz was pulled one set of tangos, but still, that's not a whole lot. It's gonna delay the bottle quite a bit. Oh, let's see. And let's see the oh, last yeah, hit damage. Pulled, right. Ritz has one more like last hit damage over Nature's Prophet, but Nature's Prophet animation uh, also really good. So we'll see all the last hits go in the mid lane. I expect Quap to potentially get some early kills unless Nature's Prophet's gonna have to TP out, you know, to not die. And then we go into the tri lane. What do you make of this tri lane matchup? Um. Pretty interesting. I definitely give the advantage to AU just in the fact that they have a lot of kill potential here. If uh, if top of the line is able to get to their around level three, it could be a little bit more tricky just because of the ability of Phantom Lancer to continually spam his uh, Spirit Lance there. He actually opted to go level one Spirit Lance, which is a bit interesting. It means that if they do decide to go on him here, there's nothing that stops them from killing him. We'll see if uh, they decide to or not though. Oh, they're actually going to find the Keeper of the Light. Yeah, so Captain Cray is stunned up by Alaska getting pretty low. No multicast yet at uh, just level 1. Nicola gets in a few attacks. The living armor goes off on Captain Cray, so he's healing back up. And then uh, let's check out the mid lane as we rotate down to bot to look at that. So the Weaver, Lone Druid matchup. I feel like Weaver kind of wins this, uh, especially before 5. Uh, what are your thoughts on this matchup? It really depends how aggressive the Weaver is trying to be. Because of the low, uh, the high cooldown of uh, Shikuchi right, right now, now, as I you can Railgun. see, Weaver just getting really low. Yeah, I usually like to yeah. wait until level 3 for that. I think yeah. you have the biggest window of opportunity at level 3 as Weaver. Level 2 Suguchi, lower cooldown. Yeah. You have a Geminate as well. You can get a lot more done. Yeah. Uh, Lone Druid's not going to be 5. Doesn't have sentries either. If I was Railgun, I would have I would have cried to my team for sentries this game, probably. So I think this was a fantastic response to this lane. Uh, Railgun actually put his stout shield on himself instead of on the bear. Um, Mid lane's getting pretty close right now. Down, Ooh, blinking away is Ritz. The poison is still on Zeth. He tangos up. Will he go down? No, he won't. He's going to live through that. He lives with about 32 HP. And you can continue your thought. 
Yeah, um, so he actually put the stout shield on himself, on the hero, instead of the bear, which is uh, going to be pretty helpful here. Uh, for him at least, because his bear is definitely not going to go down into 1v1. Oh, in the mid lane! Um, the thing Zeef. Oh, yeah. Taking up the first oh. blood. Living armor, I think, negated maybe like one attack there from the Quap. Uh, Quap being pretty aggressive too. Uh, but they go down. Zeeth draws the first blood, which is going to be nice for him. Definitely a big win for the Nature's Prophet there. He did get the XP, so he's sitting at level 4 uh, compared to the level 3 of the Queen of Pain, just now starting to hit level 4. But they do get the first Blood Gold on top of that, which is going to be pretty helpful, as he does pick up his boots as well. That was pretty funny, that actually. I just noticed Nature's Prophet and Quap on the same exact build, and Nature's Prophet right back into the game after going back to base. They're going on Railgun, Railgun getting low. Looks like he will go down. He does salve up. Is it going to be enough? No, Zeeth picking up yet another kill. So Boots now sitting yeah. on almost Fantastic 600 rotation. gold. That was a great rotation, though, from the Nature's Prophet. That's perfect. Yeah, it's a good hero to put mid, for sure. You can farm, 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 and if you want him to gank, you can just TP in. Um, doesn't work in every case, but so far doing a great job of it. It's funny, because generally the lane that you expect to have the most action, the uh, 3v3 lane up top, hasn't really seen any kills yet. Uh, more so the mid and bot lanes have been pretty uh, action-packed. Yeah, um, I don't, I don't know I if there's talk a ton a of burst bit. damage top for either side. More so for top of line, I think, the illuminate lands. Uh, and if Gyro gets in a good position too for his uh, Rocket Barrage, as yeah. he has killed the second point there, so that is something they will want to do. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit more though about the Bear versus Weaver. If Bear gets his Tranquil Boots uh, relatively quickly on the hero, it's very hard for Weaver to be able to stay in that lane. Um, that's the biggest kind of point of impact, I guess. Uh, Ping coming out now from Nicola. They do see that the uh, side camp, the hard camp here, has been pulled, but a little bit too late to be able to do anything about it. Kind of looks like Quap picked up a regen in the mid lane, so Quap, uh, I guess, having better rune control. I didn't really see where the first rune went. I think he got it as well, and that's to be expected. Nature's Prophet pretty slow unless he's going to TP. Even going with the early boots, uh, not that fast of a hero. Look at the CS in mid, actually. Uh, because of the amount of rotation that's been happening, it's 21 to 8 in favor of the Queen of Pain. So, sitting pretty happy. And uh, on top of the invis, she does get a haste as well, so that's going to be pretty good. Yeah, and Nature's Prophet, even with the first blood and two kills, co-op, uh, because of the last, it's going to have about 400 more gold in the net worth, so uh, doing pretty good for herself. She this rotation the is interesting. Yeah, mid. It's a pretty early rotation. He's not This level is a great five. rotation. He had haste, though, that he got as well. Gonna initiate onto the PL. It doesn't have enough mana for Doppelwalk, but it looks like nothing's gonna come of it. And Ritz uh, having wasted a bit of time, I guess. Yeah. I don't think... There, there just wasn't the coordination there. Um, that was a really nice time to initiate, except his team just didn't really know what he was doing, I guess. Uh, they didn't really follow up. If they had started with a Telekinesis from Rubik, that would have been a sure kill on the PL. Or on anyone else they decided to engage on, especially considering Quap did have haste there and would have hit level 6 uh, with the first kill. So she would have been able to follow up with an ultimate. Also the fact that Steve didn't have enough mana for a doppelwalk was a good opportunity to exactly. kill PL early, that's for sure. And Zeeth now mm -hmm. uh, with the first blood and he lived for that kill. And uh, another kill he picked up bot, also sitting in mid lane with a, a decent level advantage. Uh, gonna be one level ahead of Ritz, he's level 7. Has yet to use his, what is it even called, Wrath of Nature. Uh, gonna be a pretty big teamfight spell, I feel like a lot of people underestimated uh, early on. Yeah. Definitely. Um, does massive amounts of damage, especially considering there's a 3v3 lane. So like the Gyrocopter, the Ogre, as well as the Rubik, they're all sitting at level 3 while he's level 6. So if he can hit all three he uh, heroes in the top lane with that Wrath of Nature and then come in for the fight, that's going to give them a massive advantage there, uh, if Quap is unable to rotate in time. And Railgun now level 6 as well, going to be pretty hard for Weaver to kill solo. Uh, he's still pretty slow at the mm -hmm. moment. Not getting an insane amount of farm down here, only 14 last hits in about 7 minutes, so it doesn't even have the Tranquil Boots yet that you mentioned uh, being a really good pickup early on in that matchup that he's finding himself in. And it looks like Zeeth uh, showing his hand there, I guess, asking if there was a Rubik mid when indeed there was. Yeah. I don't necessarily think that's the best thing to do, uh, to type in all chat here. It's better to just be uh, passive and make him stay there even longer. But in fact, they're gonna go on bot lane right now. Yeah, so TPing down there again is Zeeth. They're gonna take out Railgun. He's gonna drop for the second time, making him 0 and 2. 
Gonna delay boots anymore, gonna be pretty slow. And the top lane, do we have any action? It doesn't really look like it. Um, something I find a little interesting are these wards. So that ward there, um, I've seen it, you know, occasionally nowadays. It's less likely to be dewarded early on and it spots the rune. But I'm a little... Is this for a courier snipe over here on the back end? Like, what is that? Potentially. I'm not actually sure uh, why they would put it there. It doesn't really see much of what they want to see right now. Um, and actually, what happened up top is uh, the Rubik gave a salve to the gyrocopter, but it happened as he was getting hit by a range creep, so it got immediately cancelled. So just a complete waste of a salve there. That's why you do the handoff. So that's a, that's a bit of an issue, considering they're all really low. So a little bit sloppy right now, I yeah, want to say. lost quite a bit of the region there. So I would, I would say top of the line having the early game that they really want right now. Their lane is surprisingly defensive, yeah. the tri lane. Kiel is getting a decent amount of farm, 33 second highest in the game. They've got three kills to one, which I'm actually pretty surprised about. Weaver's doing well in the bot lane, so things looking pretty good for top of the line. Um, still, when the, a couple more levels, we get big level sixes on most of Adiamus' lineup. I think they're going to have a pretty strong mid game, especially with what is Bloodlust level one only right now, but it should be enough. Yep. I mean, I would say the top lane's pretty even. Sure, there have been kills in the other lanes, but Queen of Pain is out CSing the Nature's Prophet by quite a bit. Uh, she is also about 600 gold higher in terms of net worth on her. Um, the lane that's working the best for them, I want to say, is the bottom lane. Just the two rotations from the Nature's Prophet have been pretty spot on, and they've given Weaver a pretty good advantage. He's sitting at level... Uh, they're about the same level, but he has a lot higher net worth, uh, about a thousand lead on the uh, Lone Druid. And the Lone Druid has been farming pretty well as well, so that's a pretty substantial lead this early on. Actually, top lane, they managed to get a kill on PL. But Nature's Prophet all doing work. If there's another attack on Nicola, looks like he might live unless they just shoot a quick Illuminate, but no, gonna be out of mana. Zeth doesn't care, TP's in, takes out Rubik anyways. Nice. The ult gonna go off from Ritz, that's gonna take out Coddle. So Coddle down, Eric Kuno trying to run away, pops a living armor. Ritz could be in a bit of trouble, has enough mana to blink, why he's but staying. for some reason still staying there. Treant gonna pick up a double kill, maybe a bit of lag, I'm not sure. Alaska had to pretty much fall back uh, off of that. There was n there was no way he could have done it though. I don't think this was lag. I'm not sure what's happening. It seems like a, bit, a little bit of trash talk right now. Yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's fine though, I guess. I had an idea actually for competitive Dota. See, there's a bunch of things like the Dendi's out eight thing that happened, like everyone talking trash in game. Yeah. I feel like you shouldn't be able to see the chat for the competitive esports because if you think about real sports, you don't know what they say on the field, and I bet what they say is very offensive. That's true, definitely true for a lot of cases. Um, yeah, that was definitely just uh, a lot of greed coming out of Ritz there, and it did not pay off at all. Uh, there was no way he would have been able to kill the uh, Treant Protector without another Scream of Pain, and if he had used it, he wouldn't have been able to blink out. Uh, he didn't have enough mana for it anyways, but he definitely had the blink. He definitely wanted to try to get the right clicks in, but took way too much damage, and he had the blink animation coming up when he realized it too late, but as I said, too late, he died for it. And now Nicola, pretty poor as a result of the tri lane. Um, not really going the way they planned, yeah. I would think. No boots. He's got a smoke, maybe looking to gank. Uh, Alaska's with him now as well. I think maybe they're trying to take out the Weaver. Does Alaska have vision? There's one sentry. Uh, unstoppable, level 9. Fast, level 4 Saguchi, time lapse. With one sentry, I think it may be pretty hard to take him out. But we'll see what happens as they make their way over. Yep. Um, Start off nicely yeah, with an we'll entangle. See. Saguchi's yep. been used as well. They're gonna find They're him. They're gonna find him as well. This is perfect. Put down oh, the sentry. The sentry didn't go down fast oh. enough. Unstoppable took the right path out of there. So that could have been a very nice play. They might catch up though. He's in a. Oh, he stayed. That was a really nice play. He can TP out if he has to. I think they're out of vision though, unless more just came out on the courier. No, that was wards that came out to Alaska. Oh. And this is leaving Uncle Panda top against the tri lanes. So he's not farming at all anymore. Um, so starting yeah, to fall only that, a little bit behind the PL. Yeah, he didn't go Tranquils either, which means that every nuke from PL is just going to be so much damage to him, and he has nothing to kind of counter that. Um, Rubik, interestingly enough, has zero items now because he did have a smoke as well as a TP. They used the smoke earlier. How did oh. that Illuminate miss in the mid lane? It was so close. Ritz looking for blood here. He's got his ultimate. I uh, probably could have taken out Zeth. Maybe a little apprehensive because Captain Cray was around, but... It's like the Coddle mm -hmm. backed off. Could have been a kill, but, you know, playing from behind, I guess Ritz uh, being a little more careful now. Yep. 
uh, Alaska there guarding the regen. She does have the Observer Wards up for the third wards now. Um, funnily enough, they did see the Nature's Prophet TP there because of that ward that we were talking about earlier, the confusing one. Uh, but I, I still don't necessarily agree with it this early on, the, the one in the mid lane there. Yeah, and by the time it was there, the courier was upgraded anyway, so I don't know if like they were trying mm -hmm. to walk over and snipe a walking courier, thinking that Nature's Prophet yeah. would have to bottle crow, but I don't know. I can see the intent, but yeah, kind of wasted. And then, like you said, these nukes from PL doing work in the top lane. Coddle's not with them yet, but looks like Steve. That's just a ridiculous name, Steve, for esports, but whatever. <laughs> Going to get mana from Coddle. Pretty good. So he can just throw out the nukes uh, even more now. Yep. Really good tread switching from him. Um, he's switching to intreads every time he wants to harass as well with the Spirit Lance, so just a solid play there so far. Those treads and their efficiency, they're just so darn good. Mm -hmm. uh, but it looks like we got Gyrocopter, uh, so Uncle Panda and Alaska here in the mid lane, backing up Ritz, maybe trying to. Uh, the Weaver is really get this commanding the lane now. Yep, I don't know if they can get him right now. With an aggressive blink, they're able to, and he actually just uh, used treants on the trees that would save him in the event of a dive, but they don't look like they want to right now. Tower is under attack. And the top they did tower. spot the Keeper of the Light there. I feel like if Ritz had blinked a lot earlier, they would have been able to get the kill on the Keeper of the Light. They saw him walking there, they pinged it, but a uh, little bit of a late blink. And now top lane's getting pressured. Let's see, phase boots on Panda, so he's pretty fast, he's but down. Coddle has a fast base move speed. He's pretty hard Radiant to just catch off guard, as we just saw him run away from the two support. Uh, Steve and Eric Kuno here pushing the top lane. Looks like he just took out Rubik, who is still yep. bootless uh, and 100 gold right now, unless he bought it in a stash or it's on the courier, which it isn't. Nope. So no, he's pretty poor. Not the game that you dream of when you dream of Rubik, but... No. Still with the opportunity to get At back in this one a couple team cancer. fight. Wait, what? He has one smoke. That is all he has. Ah. Got it. Well, he probably doesn't have lung cancer, but he's got, got one. I guess not. Got him. Don't plug your team. <laughs> I was hoping you wouldn't catch that. So uh, Hasted Nature's Prophet now coming in from the bottom. He is going to run into the two supports, and these are two supports that are able to kill him. Not the, the call best chase down. Though. Yeah, uh, could have been chain stunned a little better, wait for him to drop, throw him further back nice. to run. Uh, Sprout to buy some space. Everyone kind of chasing him now, and this is just buying everyone more time to farm. PL taking a commanding lead right now over uh, the Gyrocopter in farm. 66 last hits compared to 49. Uh, let's see, yep. Railgun here at 51, not doing terrible. He's got an Entangle on Unstoppable, is it going to be enough? Probably not. The mana is still there for a time lapse if he needs it. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, that all that uh, advantage, they were pretty even up until the rotation from the supports game. They tried to kill bottom, didn't work. They tried to kill mid, didn't work. So the supports are really not finding anything. Ogre Magi just has boots now. Rubik, as we had mentioned before, nothing. Is making it pretty hard. And they're for gonna him. try again. It's unfortunate. I think that when Ritz came top with that invis into a haste, that was really the opportunity to crack this game open for them. Oh, that was just 300 gold now for the Weaver in the bot lane. They managed to kill the bear, so um, he's getting a lot of money. Oh wow, bear went down. That's 300 gold now for anyone yeah. that doesn't know, yeah. and he's on pretty low life. So if they kill him now, bear's on cooldown for 100 seconds, and railgun is gonna be in a lot of trouble if that happens anytime soon. And uh, Unstoppable, he's got the pers- I can't read. Perseverance, yeah, so gonna regen that mana pretty quickly, can potentially get aggressive against that. Even with the Rubik down there, um, as long as he can time lapse out. Yeah, he's gonna be okay now. He's pretty much unkillable, especially with the living armor on top of the Perseverance uh, uh, general regen that he can get. And they're gonna start pressuring the top lane right now. So this game, in the early game at the very least, is looking really good uh, for top of the line. And the tower goes down, Steve picking up that last hit, so doing what he needs to do. He's got the drums on him, on his person right now, um, and then dual robe of the Magi, Magi, however you want to say it. So it looks like he is just going to rush a defusal after that, instead of maybe going for a Yasha for, I don't know, more farm, more move speed. It looks like they, they think they're in a pretty good position. The Yasha, most people say it's generally more for farming. I don't know if there's a huge difference, but... yeah. Technically, the Yasha may be it a little bit more efficient. Yeah, 
it's a really cheap uh, item for what it does. Um, it gives you a lot of agility for the extra damage. It gives you a lot of uh, move speed as well for the just general mobility, being able to escape easier. Ruby control um, on the bot lane. I really. Yeah. <laughs> I think Unstoppable's this going Weaver for this, no problem. Crazy. Even Zeth yeah. showing up to the party. If they take out Railgun here, it won't be the worst. That's not going to be great for him, but Bear will most likely be back up. Alaska TPing in. Zeth carrying nice. a TP, just going to TP out. Oh. Weaver time lapse is in. Um, that was. The call down left a bit to be desired, but it looks like in the end it's not going to matter. <laughs> the Rocket Barrage doing quite enough damage. Uh, and meanwhile, the pings come out to defend the top tier too, as Steve and Eric Kuno here is still just pushing that down. Yeah, um, greedy play by Weaver, he definitely could have gotten out, he saw the gyro in low health, but he didn't know that he did have a full magic stick there, so the magic stick definitely helping out, kind of baiting the Weaver into the greedy play, and Weaver paid the price there with his life. I didn't see if Nature's Prophet went down, I think he Nature's Prophet got out with a TP, but I'd say even pretty greedy yeah. for him, I mean, um, yep. unstoppable on the Weaver, could have just went in there, killed Rubik, Time lapsed out and been gone. That would have been a, a big Whoa. win. Instead. Speaking of greed, actually, the mid lane uh, blink forward aggressively Ooh, interesting uh -uh, sprout. by the Queen nice of Pain. Wow. Illuminate hits as yeah. well, but it's not going to be enough damage. Yep. And a lower level of blink, he could have maybe died. Oh, nice deny oh, there by Ritz. I thought Zeth was going to pick up that tower. That would have been uh, the top tier one and the mid. <laughs> Zeth is a talker. Um, yeah, I was going to say. tier that. two bot. Uh, or top, excuse me. Uh, staying alive, it's about half health right now. Rubik steals living armor, he can go ahead and heal that up, but... Oh, he is 6. I was about to say, I have a feeling he might not be 6, uh, even at 18 minutes, but it looks like he is just barely. Uh, Railgun in the bot lane, up to 2,300 gold, so doing pretty decent. Getting another nice entangle. Zeth comes down with the DD. They're going to pick off this bear. So bear is able yep. to be resummoned uh, immediately if he wants it. Could be a little risky if you kill him again. Like, it'll be a 2 minutes of cooldown. A... That was definitely a really in intuitive play that not many players would be able to make on that Nature's Prophet. Gets the DD and immediately goes bottom to just kill the bear as it was at about 30% health. So a really smart play from Zeth there, uh, paying off really well, 300 gold for them. It's like two uses of Midas right there, picking that off. Yeah, exactly. Uh oh, um, oh looks like the supports now. here may be in trouble for top of the line. Alaska's getting pretty low, but Ritz hits a nice ult on two. Captain Craig goes down on the coddle. Ritz now just has to chase okay. Eric Kuno away. Uh, the Living Armor still doing a lot. Nature's Prophet used his ult as well. And Steve showing up to the party, gonna get stunned up. Although I still think Eric Kuno maybe just a little too tanky here. Oh, it's gonna be pretty close. The Living Armor goes off again. <laughs> it's gonna be uh, five damage blocks, I guess. Oh no, it's max, seven. Uh, Ritz, wow, Ritz <laughs> goes down. That's unfortunate, and that's why Triant is annoying, and people ban him. And or pick him so first, Triant I guess. So Triant should be TPing now. That's a bit of a uh, problem here. He got lucky on his uh, living armor. I think he should have TP'd as soon as he uh, got that low. He was about two ticks away from dying. Uh, but he does live, so that's uh, okay then. Do you know, where do they play from? Are they based in US or? They're based in the East, yeah. East, okay. US East. I scrimmed them once. Mm -hmm. Audiamus. Well, I subbed for Nexus a while back. Uh, I think we played them not in SIVA, okay. maybe Symphony Gaming, or maybe just for fun. Okay, cool. But yeah, another pause. Pause, set. pause city over here. Yeah. I guess we can use this time. I haven't even went to the gold graph, which is normally I'm pretty good at. Uh, but pretty much yeah. what you would expect, a pretty steady increase towards top of the line, about 7,000, 7,500 gold lead right now. Check out the XP, maybe 5.5. Five, five. So doing pretty well, especially given the lineup, how we thought that Audiamus might kind of dominate the early mid. Yeah. Um... This is when you want to make a switch on your heroes. Um, I want. I would like to see Railgun try to go for a Maelstrom instead of the what might be a Radiance Rush with the 2700 gold banked up. Uh, I, I say Rush, but it's it's already pretty late now. Um, the Gyrocopter has very little. He has Phase Drum, just a result of his supports having to rotate. And uh, I say he has very little. His supports have, of course, even less there. Uh, just the Boots of Speed still, as well as Wards on uh, the Ogre Magi. And then on the Rubik still, I mean, he's sitting with the TP scroll. He does have enough money for boots, though, so... Getting there. So there's that, you know, 20-minute boots. <laughs> that takes skill. I'll be the first to admit it. Was that just me?
But yeah, well, I pulled up the item list here, even though you sort of ran through it. Um, drums phase, Ritz going for an Orchid, Nicole's got a TP, so at least he can get home. Steve has had drums forever, but for some reason hasn't used the I have courier. No idea. Like, I'm I'm really confused here. Uh, he has so many items on the stash this. Stash is pretty stacked. He like has a diffusal almost. Uh, and drums. Does he have other items too? Yeah, he had, like he's filled his stash. So uh, when you buy items now, they get dropped on the floor. So he also has a blade of alacrity on the floor in his base. So he has just because his stash is so full. Fourteen gold. So I think he's just walking does back he, does to he have pick the it all one? up. Yeah, yeah. He's got one in yep. the stash, one on the ground, two robes, and he needs fourteen more gold. So for some reason, yep. he apparently he doesn't need items. So he's <laughs> Steve. He's the Almighty <laughs> Steve. Uh, Zeth yeah. here on the Nature's Prophet has the Shadow Blade finished. Uh, also sitting in his stash, maybe because a certain Phantom Lancer is gonna fill the courier if he uses it. Um, or just, you know, he's low on mana, he can go back to base and pick it up. That's exactly what he's doing right now. Um, the Shadow Blade drums. It's a base party. Now. Yeah, it is a base party for top of the line. Feeling confident with their lead, they think they can just take a little snooze. There we go. And There's the Diffusal Blade. I definitely agree with the Maelstrom. I mean, it's an amazing item. Uh, it enables quick jungle farming or flash farming or even quick push. Uh, but now we got Unstoppable. Making sure Railgun doesn't get any items, just wailing on the bear yeah. right now. Look how much damage he did to the bear. Wow. Zeeth gets picked up by Nicola, but Nicola is squishy right now. 644 health. Uh, he actually bought boots, so there's a big win there. Zeeth gonna be caught out, maybe. Alaska blocking the tree route. Zeeth trying to TP out if he gets out, and okay, Ritz with another scream. That would have been really unfortunate if he got out. So Zeeth goes down. That's a big pickup for Adi Amos and XP gold, uh, yeah. and even morale probably picking off that kill. They're in greedy positions now. This is a really good time to pick off some of their heroes. The Keeper of the Light was just dewarding in a place where he really shouldn't be. Um, and now Adiemus is just being a little bit more aggressive. Oh, deciding to back up now with the Queen of Pain. Radiance but a really good pick off on the Nature's Prophet. That's definitely the hero you want to kill. He does have the highest, well now the second highest net worth as uh, PL just now. The, the hero you really don't want to have farm. Now, now that he has farm. items and can jungle, uh, and probably yep. will be pushing down this top tier two relatively soon. I wouldn't be surprised if top of the line maybe groups as as three or four somewhere else just to take the pressure off a little bit, and he can get that tower. Mm -hmm. I like such a greedy skill build too. Yeah, Only one point in doppelwalk. I feel like I mean all the ganks that he was presented with uh, sort of failed, so I, I could see the one point in yep. doppelwalk. That's what I do if I'm feeling comfortable on PL, because it doesn't change anything exactly. about the spell except the cooldown, so... Uh-huh. And, I mean, it worked in this case, for sure. Railgun getting pretty low. The Weaver Bug is still eating at him, uh, taking a Wrath of Nature to the face as well. Ritz going on the chase now. Unstoppable. Actually, he used Time Lapse and is only at 500 health, so he's pretty low. Looks like they're both gonna run out of there. And now, uh, Audiamus' support's already pretty poor and in a, in a bad position, I suppose. And now we've got Weaver Invis, PL Invis, and Nature's Prophet Invis, and Treant Invis. And then, why not, Coddle could be Invis too. So they're going to be forced to buy a lot of Sentries and Dust, uh, if not a gem. And they're already pretty poor. Yep. With the amount of split push that Top of the Line has, there isn't really much that the, uh, the heroes that Audiamus have can kind of handle it. They have to kind of group together to get kills off, and if they do, they're getting split pushed. And if they only send one person to deal with a split push, that's when Nature's Prophet comes in and it becomes a 2v1. Um, so you can see, like, as always, the uh, Keeper of the Light as well as the Phantom Lancer in the top lane, the Weaver in the bottom lane, and then the Nature's Prophet just farming his uh, life away, as well as the Roof, who hasn't really been anywhere but their jungle so far. But whenever the Nature's Prophet sees a kill potential, or a split push potential, he goes there right away. Yeah, or even to take the bear off. It looks like that's what he was TPing down there for again. Uh, Weaver picking up yep. a Lincoln, so solo versus a lone druid. I feel like 23 minute Lincolns is pretty good, uh, especially getting some kills down there as well. But yeah, I believe the top tier two was just denied by Alaska, so a nice pick up there. Uh, the bear gets sprouted. This bear's dead. Yeah. Another pick off. Looks like Zeth again getting that, so another 300 gold. Uh, he's got a robe of the as magi well on him right now. I don't know what he's going to be building out of that, but. Yep. This is great because of 
the fact that the supports on uh, Audemus are so poor, they can't just keep buying TPs to be able to defend each tower. So I mean, they're just it's a slow choke. It's a it's a really slow death now here, but uh a really strong grasp there from uh, top of the line. Just getting further and further ahead. Yeah, and then also, like I said earlier, having to buy sentries and dust as well, not having enough for TPs, the split push pressure just rotating around a lot on these supports is going to be a pretty hard game for him. Mm -hmm. But yet to have a huge team fight clash, um, I don't know. How far have they fallen behind in XP? It's not an incredible amount, 5,000 at 24 minutes. I guess it's pretty big, but... Um, um. It's a slight lead, yeah. Considering what, 10,000 10, is the large comeback threshold for TI3, according to Valve? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know where they got those stats. I want to know the research that went into that. Uncle Panda in the top lane in a lot of trouble. Uh, Diffusal yeah. even used there to pick up the charge, and like you said, Nature's Prophet with the watchful eye TPing in there. Actually picks up the kill, so doing well. He's got... Oh, Orchid, okay, that's what the robe is for. Probably should have been able to figure that out. It's usually not the one I get first, but I guess it gives you attack damage on Nature's Prophet, so... Mm -hmm. Yep, um, I mean, they're, they're executing their strategy very, very well. Um, they're not allowing any opportunities for the 5-man potential that AU has, as uh, they might have a slightly stronger 5-man on their team. And they're just trying to delay the game, they're strong, uh, they know they have the better late game with the Phantom Lancer as well as the Weaver and the Nature's Prophet, uh, adopting a very tri-core uh, style. And it's working out well for them. And Railgun just got the Relic delivered, so it looks like he is still going uh, for... I don't even know what it's called. The Radiance. Uh, gonna TP out as Zeke sees in there, tries to pick him off. He actually just TP to his tower. But, uh, you know, whatever you gotta do, I guess. I think he would have been okay. Maybe a little unsure uh, if Nature's Prophet didn't have some backup. Radiance middle tower mm -hmm. is under attack. And Zeke, he's picked up the Yasha on top of the Diffusal and Drum, so it looks like he is just gonna go for a Manta. And I'd expect nothing less than a Manta Heart. I don't think he has to worry about anything. Nice. And, um, on the ball You're today. Hired. <laughs> Korea, here I come. Yes, let's go. <laughs> Tell Febby. They actually find Railgun here. Uh, we'll see if they have the uh, damage to kill him. If He's they, pretty If they really got the actually. damage, just kill the bear as well yeah. as Nature's Pro or sorry, um, Lone Druid. But they take him down. Mm -hmm. Zeth gonna pick up that kill as well. So now involved in ten out of eleven kills. Uh, yep. Steve, Steve now rotating, rotating there as well. Yeah. Uh, rotating while farming, a, a casual farming rotate, um, which I guess is what we expect of PLs. As they look to push, is that the last outer tower? Oh, there's one mid as well. There's just a lot of people standing over it right now. Uh, so two outer towers remain, Alaska. He's got mana boots right now. Uh, not a whole lot of levels, and I think Ogre is kind of a support that does need levels, because he gets better as his multicast gets better. I mean, I guess yeah. his, his stun is still pretty high damage, um, and still great for Weaver, but now that Weaver has a Lincolns already... And Zeth here on the Nature's Prophet, picking up the Orchid of Malevolence, so looking to get a lot done with that. I guess that's pretty much for Quap. Mm -hmm. Let's see if uh, top of I mean, the line doesn't decide it, to just It's a little approach. too little too late. Yeah, it's too little too late with for the Orchid though. I mean, uh, Nature's Prophet has that as well as the Shadow Blade and a Midas on top of that. Uh, off cooldown unfortunately, so hopefully he gets to a, a creep stat to be able to use that. Um, as they are aggressively jungling now. And I mean, they're really making a really widespread use of the map. You have the PL farming in his own jungle. Um, Keeper of the Light looks like he's going to farm in the jungle as well, actually picking up a Vitality Booster, maybe going for an Atos, uh, so hopefully. Um, and then, I mean, the Radiant's own jungle being farmed by both the Weaver as well as the Nature's Prophet there briefly. And um, any free lanes just go to whoever they can from the cores. They are lagging. I, I checked console. They have like yeah. 200 ping each. Oh wow. Or at least Rubik did. Um, so 28 minutes. Radiance has come out to Railgun on the Lone Druids. I mean, I guess they just want the Radiance to deal with the PL Illusions, but there's a reason you normally don't go Radiance before 20 minutes. PL's gonna be pretty, like, 
fast to a, a Manta and a Heart and hard to kill, as he's already at 2,000 gold right now. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be pretty tough. I mean, they only really hope to turtle. Um, as far as turtling though, it could be pretty difficult. You have Queen of Pain for the counter push, you have Rubik's Fade Bolt, you have the Flat Cannon, but I mean, you are going to want to save the Flat Cannon for sure for the fights. Um, apart from that, I mean, there's going to be a lot of split pushing. I feel like that's the path to victory for top of the line, and they're very limited in how they can deal with the split push, uh, as they've been limited all game. Uh, Roshan is theirs to take uh, for whenever top of the line wants to take it, as they can keep the pressure up uh, with the Furion, as well as his ultimate, the Wrath of Nature. Yeah, I'm kind of surprised they didn't go take it when the uh, Gyrocopter went down just now, but I guess they are all pretty spread out, making use of the map, farming like everywhere they can. Uh, they will have plenty of opportunity to get it. I think if they just take two heroes, they can most likely take it, especially with Treant's tanking. Uh, Weaver working towards a Desolator, I'm just assuming for the, the armor. Um, still 18 yeah. armor on Railgun is pretty high. Uh, and a good item on Weaver regardless. Definitely doesn't need... Ooh. Oh, wow. What? What was that even doing there? That was weird. That was so, so risky. Goes down. Z uh, gonna be in trouble as well. Gonna be taken out. So that's Radiant's a kill. Um, AU lost the courier, which I guess is why Zeth was there. I didn't really, I didn't see that yeah. develop. Yeah, that's why he was there. And he used his uh, shadow blade for that too to one shot the courier. So I mean, really risky play. He did get it, but I don't think it's worth it here. Um, I mean, they were so far ahead. Yeah, and it gives them if a window anything, now to push help the experience. And, and get this tower. And yeah, the exactly. experience graph turns around a bit, and I guess, according to Valve, we're now sorry, at the though. point where it would be a large comeback. Uh, the gold at 14k advantage right now, XP floating around 10k, so top of the line, a pretty convincing lead. As they come to defend this 4v5, uh, call down is up in 4 seconds, Cray gets rooted up, goes down instantly. Uh, the Radiant's actually doing quite a bit of damage to him. Let's see what happens here to Unstoppable. It's caught in the call down time lapse as well, but back into the call down again. Uh, a lot of scream of pain. Yeah. Maybe they all hit him there as well. That's three kills. They lose Alaska on the Ogre Magi. They get the tower. Uh, they pick up Nature's Prophet before that. Lost the courier, but yep. at this point in the game, definitely worth it for them as we see the graphs start to turn around and maybe even have them get two Absolutely. towers here. Yep, uh, and that all escalated off the back of a kind of very risky uh, play, a needlessly risky play from the Nature's Prophet. Uh, turns out very well in the favor of Adamus. They do secure a couple of kills on the cores and the Keeper of the Light, as you had mentioned. And now they've um, got to now go having the TP all the way back, yeah, deal with that split push. Because yeah, the split push, like we've mentioned, is going to be pretty fierce this game with uh, PL and Nature's Prophet going at it. And there's Uncle Panda goes back solo, and Zeth picks him off immediately. The stun has already been used. Zeth is just going to TP out, so a good play there. And I think you touched on that early too. If someone just TPs back alone, you know, PL or Prophet can just kill them. Or Weaver, I guess. Exactly. Maybe not up the hill anymore, but... Yep. Um, it's, it's, a, it's the Prophet and one gank, really. So, yeah, yeah, let's we'll see. see. Triance um, had a mech for a while. We didn't really point that out, but but he hasn't really been part of the fights. It's kind of just like a casual mech. I mean, he doesn't really have anywhere to go because if he goes there, they're probably gonna want to fight as five with the Triant there. Otherwise, he's just kind of sitting around. Uh, he does have one point in his nature's guise, so he is able to stay invisible and kind of cheer on from the sidelines there, the in the trees. But we haven't really seen him do much besides spam. No, yeah, anymore. not really. I mean, I guess it, it favors top of the line not to fight head on, as we saw exactly. them fight head on, even though it was 4v5. Um, they kind of got owned at their tier 1 tower there. Big alts from this team yep. that Audiamus has drafted. Yep. I mean, his presence is there with the living armor, uh, helping Rubik, uh, sorry, Weaver on the bot lane do so much more up against the lone druid, as well as just generally helping the 3v3 lane. And uh, this is a really interesting idea. It looks like they decided, screw it, we're five manning, we're gonna go top. But at the same time, there is a lot of damage being done here uh, on the bottom lane. They did take the mid tower as well with the Phantom Lancer, who's taking a lot of damage from the tower. Um, took about a quarter of his health there. They did get the tower in top and are able to come down to defend. But, I mean, half over half health tower down mid lane. Yeah, he left the Spirit Bear behind with the Radiance to sort of thwart the push, or even do some pushing of his own in a lane. 
but it looks like uh, the right click damage is, is pretty high from the PL and the Nature's Prophet right now. So yeah, everyone comes back, well, maybe not everyone. Railgun here now, top, he summoned his bear. It looks like Steve might go down. Is the Radiant Spurn gonna be enough? It looks like nice. it will. Zeeth comes up as well. Can we get another entangled? Zeeth could be in trouble, I don't know. Maybe I'm thinking Railgun's in trouble here. Three on one at the tower. TPing out of this as there's no stun. Looks like he's gonna be just fine. There but should have been a stun. He, he had overgrowth up. And the bear um, even gonna get summoned back as well somehow. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, a little bit of a misplay really there. That was your time there, Treant. That was your time to shine. Now uh, he did have overgrowth up. <laughs> I know. <laughs> oh well. Um, we were picking mean, up a kill there in Alaska. Yep, yeah, that was interesting. Actually, she was a little bit out of position there. But I mean, they could have got the the bear. If they'd gotten the bear there, it would have been a massive. It would have been a free Roshan without the worry of being uh, able to get split pushed. Indeed. Uh, so a nice kill there on the Phantom Lancer. He does finally drop, but before he dropped, he was able to buy his heart. So it looks like he went heart before the Manta. Uh, Zeeth gonna pick up, pick off Uncle Panda. The damage is high. Even uses the Shadow Blade hit there to ensure it uh, has no escape. But it doesn't look like it's gonna matter. Weaver picks up the Desolator. Um, why'd they drop Stygian? Is that a Warcraft three hero? Ooh, I'm not sure actually. Um... I feel like everyone called it Deso anyways, but yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah, some people called it Stinge, and I was always like, really? Why do you call it that? That's kind of weird. <laughs> Got my Stinge up. That was also, um, that wasn't Bloodseeker's name, was it? It was Strigweer. Uh, oh yeah, it was something weird like that. Like this, yeah. Yeah. Oh, Dota 1. Yeah. kind of want to okay. play that game again, just to see. <laughs> Techies, just to see techies. <laughs> just to play techies again, yeah. <laughs> First blooded side shop, all day, every day. Oh, top, uh, in the mid lane here, actually, uh, Shadow Bladed Nature's Prophet. Just gonna scout things out. Sees that a lot of the team are all together and actually just breaks the trees. But Yeah, spawning some trees just to scout ahead, I suppose. The Shadow Blade was off cooldown. This is a tree battle. Weaver in the bot lane going on railgun hits him pretty hard right now. Uh, that. I was going to say, that doesn't pop Lincoln's, but there it goes. It's just a little delayed animation. Uh, so Lincoln's was popped. Could have went on him. There's no... There's dust <laughs> on Alaska right now. In the top lane, this uh, tree, he's dealing with the bear by denying every single creep from the Radiance. So he's just standing next to the bear, hitting it every once in a while to make sure it doesn't get recalled back, and then continually denying the creeps uh, that the Radiance would kill. So pretty uh, cheeky play from Ericuno there. Well, when you last hit for like 180 damage with no items, that's what you do. And then Zeus TPs and picks it off, so another pick off. That's like his third or fourth Spirit yeah. Bear this game, so about a grand Justin Spirit Bear is going towards his Nature's Prophet. Uh, Roche has not yeah. been tackled by anyone. It looks like finally top of the line. Uh, gonna group up and take out the Roche. They don't really have to worry about any contention. I don't know if I can use that word in that form. But uh, all the lanes pushed in against Audi Amos, so they really couldn't have contested that if they wanted to. Yeah. Um, just strong play. Just keeping a kind of a choke on uh, Audi Amos. They aren't able to really leave their base. Uh, they're almost like contained here, and maybe able to farm this uh, neutral camp here in the large side. But only if there are at least three people, in case they do get engaged on there. Looks like uh, we I want to be... see the wards reflect this more, though. That is Who's something big. Wards? Uh, the Dyer's wards reflect that they have so much map control. I want to see them be able to get pickoffs if uh, Audemus decide to be a little bit greedier with their jungle camps that they can farm. Just yeah. try to keep a little bit more of a grasp on the vision on that side. I would agree with that. Coddle's got one ward on him right now. The only ward they currently have, I think Coddle just dropped maybe a minute or two ago on the bottom rune, and that was probably just for the Roche attempt. Or the Roche uh, killing. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I don't know. Feeling ahead, maybe slacking on the wards a bit. I'd agree when you're this much ahead, take all the map control you can, just get pickoffs. Leads to an easier Arax with ha without having to go into all five of Audi Amos. As they do have a lot of strong alts, that's going to make going uphill pretty hard. Uh, even with a heart. Yeah. Who knows, we might be seeing a... Well, what did Uncle Panda just buy? He bought a Demon Edge. We very well may be seeing an uh -oh. Uncle Panda Rapier here on the Gyrocopter. Yeah. Which I am and what they need for. to deal with is his armor, for sure. They need to start stacking armor. Someone needs to get an AC on the team of uh, 
of top of the line, and they do have a Vlad's up actually, which was the perfect pickup for the Treant Protector here. Um, he had a, has had it up for quite a while now, and actually he's the only hero in this game I think that hasn't died yet. So knock on, knock playing on pretty well there, tree. very safe Dota. Yeah. Yeah, very oh. safe Dota. Three shot by uh, Weaver there on the Rubik, just a little bit out of position. But does he have boots? He does have boots. Still boots one. Having uh, a tough game playing the five. For sure. And Ritz. So Ruby gets picked off. Ritz forced down to half health. Maybe Uncle Panda oh. even going to go down here. Looks like they will live. Maybe having to back off. Uh, Railgun on the front lines right now. He's got Irakuno uh, all stunned up. Ritz getting a low very fast peel. Hitting like a truck. Zeth TPing in. Looks like he's going to take out Ritz. Even pops the Shadow Blade. But looks like Ritz runs right into Weaver anyways. Uh, so Ruby goes down. That forces Quap to buy back. Uh, Uncle Panda pops his BKD in the bot lane. Zeth getting pretty low. Zeth will go down. Uh, Captain Cray. Actually going to take out Gyrocopter before he dies. And then uh, Ritz. Looks like this could be enough. The Scream. Oh, wow, I thought that was actually in range. And now I think uh, Unstoppable is actually going to get out of that. Queen of Pain working towards a sheep stick right now. Oh. Steve may be in some trouble potentially. Nice chain stunning there. Uh, getting it when it counts. Nicola dies again after a buyback. No, he didn't buy back. That was Ritz. He just respawns somewhat quickly. They used so much there to kill the PL. And even Queen of Pain had died up on the bottom. Uh, she blinked forward aggressively, immediately getting orchided by the Nature's Prophet, and then the Weaver helping kill uh, the Queen of Pain there. Which means Nature's Prophet Weaver? bought. Yeah, he bought back. I thought I saw him die. He does buy back. Uh, looks like they're gonna get Railgun. Oh, he had his ulti up. He could have lived. Oh well. Maybe nice try there by Weaver. Uh, yeah, it's too much action. <laughs> Split pushing all game, you know. They did get the uh, bottom tower, and continuing the push there is uh, Zeeth, who has played a pretty phenomenal game, really kind of setting the pace for his team. Uh, oh, Alaska. In a little bit of trouble, gets orchided up. Let's pop the dust before he goes down, just in case any support comes in, make sure Zeeth can't Shadow Blade away, but doesn't look like a whole lot of support's gonna come in, besides Nicola, and if he went in, pretty much they're both gonna die. Uh, Zeeth really wants the racks, I think at this point, he might... The dust ran out, he's gonna get it, Shadow Blade. Dust goes off again. He dusted. So it looks like he will be going down. Alaska going to pick up that kill there. And Uncle Panda, let's see. He's getting closer. He's at 1,600 gold right now. Uh, working towards what I hope is a sacred relic. <laughs> yeah, PL is going to get a little bit uh, kind of greedy here. I know he wants that bottom rack. So he's going to get it with an illusion, actually. So good play. Still go either way. Yeah, classic. Baiting distract the, distract, distract his, uh... the team and then use an illusion. Yep. Yep. Filthy P. <laughs> it's like he will be working towards that Manta now. He's got that ultimate orb up. Um, so the Rapier That's on really Gyro. Rich. There's not a whole lot of attack speed. I suppose they've got the Bloodlust uh, level 4 now. So 50 attack yep. speed plus he's got drums. I guess that's enough uh, to make probably a flat cannon or two before he goes down. Which. Mm, the may scary or part may is, I mean, PL. Yeah, he already has his heart. 2,500 health. He has 30 armor when he's near the Treant. Uh, that's gonna be a lot. I feel like they aren't gonna be able to kill the PL in time before he can kill the Gyro and take the rapier. Well, there's an AC coming out on Railgun now, so that will do a little bit to take some armor off. As the pushing siege continues. Uh, Audiamus has been pretty contained into their base for a long while now. Check out the gold graph, see what that's telling us. We see a bit of a, a dip in the graph when that fight happened in the tier 1 tower, uh, when they took out Nature's Prophet. And then after that, though, just right back down to about a 22,000 gold advantage. Um, XP, I guess they've been getting... The, killing the PL probably is what turned that around by about 4k. So maybe a 17k uh, <laughs> uh, XP advantage. So top of the line, still yeah. very much in control of this game. I don't like that ulti by Uncle Panda. He just uh, used his ulti to do a little bit of damage to the uh, to the Weaver, but I mean, Weaver doesn't really care. He's just going to be able to take this tower, actually, as they had already put some pressure on the mid lane, forcing the rotations, and now should just back out. So good play here by the Weaver, leaving the Trian Protector a little bit alone. They might get a free Now they're being here. pushed in three lanes right now. At least they do take out Trian. There's his yeah. first death. Oh, second death. What? When did he die? Yeah, I know. But being pushed on three lanes, they've lost two melee racks, one in the mid, one in the bot lane. Captain Cray might be in trouble, but I don't really think he's too concerned since they just picked up two racks off of that. Uh, and even Weaver in the top lane picks up another, so they've got oh. uh, 
three lanes of racks with only one ranged racks actually left and there it goes down that's megas right there and fairly uneventful megas there really wasn't even a team fight around that it just kind of happened it was just pick off central really this game which uh worked beautifully for top of the line i mean the engagements that were occurring were on their terms for the most part there weren't really any successful ganks coming out of the supports from uh Audemus, which was just a result of uh the nature's prophet playing really well very safe uh, unable to get ganked there and able to support his team in case he was needed. Unstoppable gold, gonna pick off the lone druid, and it uh, looks like he will get out of there. And yeah, it's a touch on nature's prophet. I'd say I'd give him player of the game. He w he was a little yeah he was a little type happy, and then one happy, but he backed it up. So and we never <laughs> gets denied by Steve. Gotta like that teamwork. Yeah, a Steve. Radiant's middle tower is under attack. Just waiting now for the. I mean, it's it's too hard to come back from Mega Creeps. Uh, Gyro does have the Ray Period being buried now to him, though. Um, I really hope PL doesn't see this courier. That would be really painful. But alas, it is coming back down here. So. Divine Rapier on Gyrocopter could be a little bit too little too late as there are Mega Creeps now. Kind of the story of Audiamus' game. Yeah. Wow, he's getting really low. He so might that even was... drop. He uses Flat Cannon already. Wrath of Nature does a lot. Too scared to turn around into that and drop the Rapier. Although there's really no point not to, uh, as the Tier 4s are going down. So it looks like top of the line is going to remain undefeated. They're going 5 0. Adiemus falls to 4 1. Uh, overall, a good yeah. game, that's for sure. Top of the line had maybe a better early game than they should have, thanks to Zeeth uh, with some good plays. Um, again, I'm Helium from FMVP Dota. Uh, with me tonight was Orbit from Gotham City. Uh, you can check our cast out at twitch.tv slash FMVP Dota or youtube.com slash FMVP Dota. And we've got one more match coming up for you tonight. It'll be the match of the week between Team Magic Carp and Quetzal, so make sure to stay tuned for that. And yeah, thanks for casting. Peace, everyone.